Hello friends, Mark Spade here. As always, hope this video finds you well. Hope that you are enjoying a warm pipe, a favorite blend, and a comfy chair. I myself am smoking out of my Savinelli 606 KS. And in it, some Dunhill's Elizabethan. Summer has officially begun here at the Spade House. Uh, we are going to baseball games. We're going to soccer games. We're going to friends' houses and football practice and dance recitals and all sorts of fun things that we do around here. And, uh, well, we've also been, uh, well, recently had a really cool experience at church or rather with our church. And I'll get to that more in a minute, but what I want to talk about today, the purpose of today's video is about paradigm shifts. You see, after about eight years of pipe smoking, I am undergoing a actual paradigm shift, as in a fundamental change to my approach to the hobby, or perhaps some of my underlying ideas about the hobby. Uh, that is what is changing for me and as with so many things in pipe smoking I find these parallels and I'm I probably romanticize pipe smoking a bit too much sometimes but I find these parallels with life and so as my overall approach what what has that been to pipe smoking it's been really an emphasis on tobacco an emphasis on trying new blends all the time so you've got eight years of exploration and i've i've included y'all on some of those new frontiers and new experiences and it's been a lot of fun but what i have found most recently i'd say over the last six months or so has been most of the time when i get down to the to the pipe haven looking at my tobacco selection I'm dissatisfied because what I really want isn't there or I'm trying to preserve what's left you know because I want it to age a bit or you know I want to make it stretch because I want to try more tobaccos and so I don't want to smoke out all of my capstan or all of my Maltese Falcon all of my three nuns and a couple other blends as well And so I smoke other things and some of them have not been impressive. Some of them it's more of I'm smoking just because I enjoy pipe smoking, but I'm not really enjoying the tobacco because it's this random tin that I've got laying around. And it's good, but it isn't that sublime experience that I have discovered in some of the previously mentioned blends. And so what I'm gonna do, what I am doing now is I am smoking almost everything that I have in my cellar. I haven't bought tobacco in months and I'm going to after I've cleared the the cellar for the most part I'm going to only be smoking a specific select number of blends and these are my favorites over the last eight years. In other words after a lot of adventures, a lot of adventuring, a lot of discovering, I have arrived at my destination. And that's a good feeling. Now, I'm not saying that there won't be more to, more to experience in the future, you know, in terms of new blends, that may be so, but I'm just gonna explore the blends that I like the most. I'm gonna spend hopefully the next several years with just a few blends in a normal rotation. And uh, yeah. 
I foresee this changing some of my pipes and so more on that in the future but as of right now that's that's what's going on and it, it is a fundamental shift I, I mentioned this paradigm shift to my dad um, a few months ago and he said what an odd way to describe pipe smoking I said well that should show you how important it is but shifting is good change is good you see I heard years ago and I've thought about it many times one of the constants in life is change things change it's the natural flow of being and living in accordance with that is something that I try very hard to do as often as I can not necessarily the things that I may want to do but the things that are necessary to do it's change I have to change my approach often to how I do things. As a matter of fact, uh, recently I gave counsel to a to a family member. It, it, I was being asked a couple spiritual questions, and if I'm being honest, they seemed rather trivial to me. And so I actually kind of reduced the question, you know, and in doing so, reduced my loved one. And I spoke out of out of arrogance, really. And that's not a helpful way of giving advice. It's not a, they didn't benefit from this conversation at all. I had to go back and apologize. I had to ask for forgiveness and, you know, admit that it's not that what I was saying was wrong. It's that my delivery, my approach, how I handled this interaction was absolutely wrong. There was no love in it. There was no no genuine desire to be helpful. It was just, I don't know, I guess displaying how much I might know about a particular subject. And it actually ended up having little bearing on what they were actually asking me, if that makes sense. So I had to apologize. And then we had a a conversation and we're going to have some more conversations about the subject now that we have established what is beneficial and what they're actually curious about. So now I have a new opportunity to be helpful and to help somebody progress. That's what we're here for. So shifts are good. Change is good something to embrace, not something to be scared of. I think oftentimes we find ourselves being or wanting to be right. I've researched a great many subjects and learned a lot over the last eight years, not just in pipe smoking, but in life in general. They've kind of gone hand in hand. And throughout this process of seeking out truth you know real truth what is what is all of this about where am i going what's my role in life you know these kinds of major questions i've been very right about a lot of things and very wrong about many more sometimes i've found myself being dead on it seemed you know this is where i'm going and this is what i'm doing and this is why and then after a while i realize I was wrong about something way back here. And so I've got to double back, get back into familiar waters and change my trajectory. And that's been beneficial. It's difficult, it's humbling, it's sometimes tiresome, but it is worth doing. I mentioned something that my church did. So what my church does is we pile up our baptisms, right? And we do it all in one big old shebang. And that's cool. It's a neat way of doing it. it makes it more of a party. So on Sunday evening, about maybe two to 300 folks went down to the river and 70 people were baptized that evening in the river that's cool 
really cool because baptism is cool. Baptism is something that is a exemplification of something that's very symbolic. It's, it's, it is really the first step in a real process of obedience and understanding what that means for your life. And it's a declaration of sorts. It's saying that this profound thing happened, which in this case is I met Jesus. And because of that, I was going this way. And now I have a paradigm shift and I'm displaying that for everyone. And the cool part about doing it at the river was that, you know, there's boats pulling up, kayaks pulling up, people's watching, seeing what's going on. What the heck are all these people doing here by the water? I found a lot of people just sat and watched and listened because that's what it's about. It's a real display and it's not about you, but it's saying this has changed my life for the better. I'm a new person now because of this new perspective on life. I know that my baptism was a big day for me and I know that for the majority of these people, it was a big day for them as well. And that's exciting, very exciting. Something to celebrate. And you don't have to believe the same thing I believed to at least see the merit in what was going on. It's a beautiful thing. Because change is a beautiful thing. Progress is a beautiful thing. And like with my story about giving terrible counsel, right? Sometimes we identify an area for change in our lives that is often turning away from something negative. And other times we find ourselves making changes even when we're right. It's like navigating in the woods, if you've ever done that. It's, if you've got a, a place that you're headed to, say you're using a map and compass, you gotta learn how to navigate, how to kind of pinball in the right direction. It's minor adjustments. It's not always a big change. It's little changes to get you where you're going. And those are necessary. Otherwise, you end up off course and you'll miss your destination by sometimes a couple miles. There's little tricks, you know. Stay to the left of this and then come back to the right of that one and kind of zigzag your way and you'll, you'll get there. It's not always a big, massive change. Sometimes it's just little ones. Little ones like how we talk to each other. Little ones like when you challenge the foundation of your understanding and you realize not exactly level right here. Got a bit too much on this side. I need to bring that down a notch so that way I've got a nice level platform in which to build the rest of this thought off of. That's good to do. And that can take years. But if the flow of life is change, then when you stop that flow, you really become more of a swamp dark, nasty mess of festering bacteria and sneaky predators, gators and snakes, a lot of leeches, mosquitoes. It's not a good place. It's not habitable. It's a place you venture to sometimes, but it's not a place that you want to stay. Definitely not a place that most of us want to try to build a house in. So get out of that. Get closer to that river. Get back to the flow of things. And don't be scared to make changes. Don't be too prideful to make changes. 
to when you get into the business of thinking that you are absolutely right. Whether you've been given this revelation by providence or some other source. You have a tendency to get arrogant in this new truth that you have found and this new purpose that you have found and you will leave everyone else by the wayside. You will damage the people around you with your general attitude. You'll disregard other people, reduce other people. I'm speaking about navigating the woods. In the army, we did a land navigation course and I learned this trade pretty quickly, right? How to get about using a map and compass in the woods and not get miserably lost. Anyway, I think the only thing that really held me back from excelling in this field was laziness, but I was pretty good at it. We were navigating the course in teams, teams of four. And uh, we had a dispute over how to read the map and how to plot the points where we're going. And I was certain that I was right. And so I reduced the people around me. I didn't make anyone feel like we were really a team anymore. I wanted to be the boss and I wanted to get us where we were going. It was gonna be a real victory for me, real points for Mark, right? Well, I ended up yielding the map and we ended up getting miserably lost. And it's not to say that I wouldn't have gotten us lost myself, but we got miserably lost. We ended up getting chased by a wild boar and uh, found ourselves chest deep in a swamp, wandering in circles for hours, watching for snakes and alligators, eaten alive by mosquitoes. Ended up one of us had to take off our pack and climb a tall tree and look for what resembled to be dry land we headed that way. It took some time and we found ourselves in a completely different part of the installation in which we were training on, a place we had no business being. And from there we found a road, you know, a hard road, and walked that hard road in a direction that seemed right until a very angry truck pulled up and uh, rescued us from where we were. The point of the story is that after that, we all learned a bit more about navigation and a bit more about how to make people feel like you're really part of a team. Everybody has a role and a voice and everybody has an opinion worth hearing and we can all teach and learn from each other even in the process and have honest conversation when necessary about what is right and wrong, what is perhaps an appropriate method of approach here, things that we needed to apply from previous failures that would have resulted in at least something resembling success. And so from then on, we all did much better at navigation and didn't get lost anymore. Sometimes you have to venture into these nasty bogs to figure out how to avoid getting in them in the future things to look for, not just in your navigation process, but in the terrain as you navigate it. There's a lot of metaphors there. But anyhow, that is what I'm currently doing. That is what I'm currently observing. in many fields of life, in many different places, different people that I'm observing right now, and myself obviously included, is that change is among the necessities for a great many of us to be more productive in the manner in which we navigate this life, these social dynamics, and perhaps even pipe smoking. And with that, I'm curious. What is perhaps an area that you are seeing a real change in your life for the better? Let's share that. Let's talk about that right here. And if you see a comment that intrigues you, 
engage with that individual. That's the real challenge here. Let's talk. Let's be civil, but let's have good, productive conversations. Whether that's about pipe smoking. Somebody might comment and talk about a new endeavor within the hobby. Share with that individual. You don't have to have a channel. You don't have to make a video, but comment, share ideas. It's worth doing, and this is a place to do it. And if it's something more profound, and you perhaps have some insights for that individual, then by all means, share those as well. So, with that, I'm Mark Spade. Thanks for watching.